Hello, let's get right into the material. Today we are covering the spiritual gifts and why a Christian will need deliverance and how Christians enter into witchcraft unknowingly. And we're covering 1 Corinthians 12 and John 16 verse 14. So I'm trying to make the Bible as clear, simple, and short as possible to be understood. So let's get right into the material. We're going to start here. If you are a born again Christian, you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit being born again, listed out in John 3 and Acts 19, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you cannot have a demon. Let's clear the <laughs> clear the board right there, right? You don't see a single blood-bought believer with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament having a demon at all. So let's get all the confusion out. But why would a Christian need deliverance? And what I mean deliverance is like, hey, you're fooling with a bunch of stuff that you shouldn't be doing. And now <laughs> you have gone into witchcraft is because you're doing something that the Bible says you do not have the authority to do, nor are you supposed to be doing all right. So we're going to start with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very important because the Holy Spirit is not a power. He is not an energy. He is not a superpower. He is not a ball and you cannot catch him. The Holy Spirit is a spirit and a person. So if you just want a display of how to look at the Bible, the Old Testament is God the Father um, in his relationship with the world. The Gospels is God the Son in his relationship with the world. And then the New Testament is God, the Holy Spirit, in his relationship with the world. So because the Holy Spirit is a spirit and we can't really understand him um, that well, this is why we relate to God the Father more easily because we have physical fathers. So we understand the Father being a spirit and a person. We understand Jesus being the Son because we have sons and we understand him being a spirit and a person. But because the Holy Spirit is all we know to be a spirit um, is hard. He, again, do not use it because he is a he. Uh, he is hard to understand because we have physical bodies, but we have um, spirits as well. All right. So now that we laid out the groundwork of the Holy Spirit being a spirit and a person, that means that he has a will, he has emotions, and he has a personality. This is why in... Um, Ephesians, it says for us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. If he's like a ball or a force or whatever, um, he doesn't have emotions where he can get upset. And also, this is why um, 1 Corinthians 12 says he, um, he gives spiritual gifts as he wills. So the way that a person has desires and wills, like what he wants and what he doesn't want, is the same way that the Holy Spirit, being a spirit and a person, has things that he wants and he doesn't want. So, um, we're covering 1 Corinthians 12 and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how Christians need deliverance because there's a lot of witchcraft and demonic stuff in the church, and I'm going to give you examples of what that looks like. So, uh, make sure you read the entire scripture, but today we're just covering 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11, and John 16 and 14. So, um, 1 Corinthians 12 and 11 says, But all these worketh that one and selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severely as he wills. So, 1 Corinthians 12 is about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are words of knowledge, words of wisdom, faith tongues, interpretation of tongues, miracles, prophecy, healings, and discernment of spirits. So the Holy Spirit gives people spiritual gifts, and there are nine spiritual gifts, right? And the important verb in there is as he wills, like the wills, right? And so um, you have to know that, hey, these gifts in operation are poured out as the Holy Spirit determines them, right? So I'm going to give you an example. Um, the gift of prophecy, right? The gift of prophecy is not an on and off switch that I'm just a Christian. I can just turn this thing on and off as I will. And if I just get close enough to a person or if I'm talking with a person, I just be like, hey, wait, let me see what the Lord is saying, right? And then I just pull something out of midair, right? So the danger here that I see often is that um, the gifts 
are being used as the person wills and not the Holy Spirit wills, right? So we are forcing the Holy Spirit and tugging on his gifts like, hey, do a healing right now. Hey, do prophecy right now. We're just doing this or whatever. We're not even asking what his will is. And that's what First John 5 says. It says, we know we have anything that we ask as it abides in his will, right? And so what is the easiest way to find out God's will? Reading your Bible. It strictly says what God's will is all the time, right? And then um, secondly, us being submitted to the Holy Spirit to be sensitive to him and not make him do things like he's some type of superpower or some type of energy or vibration or force or any of this new age witchcraft stuff that a lot of Christians are practicing either knowingly or unknowingly. And so um, what that looks like is that we will um, go up to a person and be like, um, hey, I see this vision or whatever, right? But this vision is always vague and this image and picture is never glorifying Jesus. So that's the question I just want to ask. And it comes from John 16 and 14. And it tells you how the Holy Spirit operates, right? This is Jesus speaking. He says, he will honor and glorify me because he will take uh, what is mine and he will reveal it unto you, right? So when the Holy Spirit is actually speaking, um, he should be saying things that are, number one, in the Bible, in Scripture, and then number two, glorifying Jesus. But if you ever see people thinking they're operating by the Holy Spirit, and they're actually not, they're operating by unclean spirits, what a common theme is, is that they're always talking about vague images, and there's no interpretation of those images. Um, number two, they're always telling you your birthday, where you live. Uh, <laughs> your phone number, right? A whole bunch of random things that sorcerers, soothsayers, witch doctors, mediums um, could tell you because what they're operating in is not the Holy Spirit, but unclean spirits. And this comes from 2 Corinthians 10, um, verse 5, right? We're supposed to um, take every thought captive and make it submit to the knowledge of God. Right. And so how um, Christians enter into witchcraft unknowingly is because you are forcing the Holy Spirit to operate in one of these gifts. But he hasn't told you if that's his will at that moment. Right. So I'm just going to give an example what practical application looks like. So you don't operate in witchcraft. Right. Um, the Bible does not tell us to get real quiet and try to hear for a voice. Right. That is yoga, which is a Hindu practice. We're not supposed to do Eastern practices. And that is meditation that comes from all these um, godless places that we're not supposed to learn from. But the Bible says that we are supposed to meditate on his word. We're supposed to read his word. Right. And the more that I read his word, the more that I know his voice. And so um, when you just quiet yourself and you try to hear some random voice, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to hear seducing spirits because you have left um, sound doctrine. And then um, a good application, I'll tell you. So I had a prayer night at my house or like a Bible study. And so we're just praying, reading the Bible, working into the confines that the Bible instructs with us. And the Holy Spirit said to me, um, the group will receive the gift of speaking in tongues that night. Right. Boom. So all I did, I told the group, I was like, hey, this is what the Holy Spirit said. And all I did was lay hands on them and I prayed with them and every single person there received the gift of speaking in tongues. Right. So the only way that I knew that is because I have read the Bible cover to cover. I have been born again, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit currently. I'm not operating outside of his confines being like, hey, you don't speak in tongues? Let me give you the gift of tongues right now. It makes no sense if you're not even born again <laughs> to get a gift of the tongues when you don't even have the Holy Spirit who gives the gifts, right? So you need to operate in the confines of uh, what the Bible says. And I want to do one more example. I'm not trying to berate people, but I do want to say this. So the way I came to Christ is that um, I went to a church when I was 19. I did not grow up Christian. And I think that's a very helpful thing. And then I just started reading the Bible cover to cover because I knew nothing about the Christian faith, right? I had an, my first Christian girlfriend um, 
was a girl who grew up in church and grew up in the charismatic um, supernatural gift stuff, right? So when we were together, um, you know, you have to live a pure life and be holy unto the Lord. But, um, you know, we're young in our 20s. And so we're having issues with like lust. We didn't have sex, um, but that sort of thing. Right. And so um, I was so new to Christianity that I just believed everything that the Bible said and what the Holy Spirit said. So I wasn't listening to any secular music. I wasn't watching secular um, television. It's just PG or G and nothing else. Right. Um, but um, her intake was <coughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but her intake was um, godless music and godless entertainment and social media. Right. But she will always say God's saying this. God saying that, right? Prophesying. But I received the Bible first and then the gifts and prophesying came second. So I leaned towards the Bible and the Holy Spirit first. And so um, there was a time where, you know, we're getting hot and heavy, not to be a description, but in short, she wanted to go way farther than I would want to go, right? Because <laughs> I know I'm a virgin, never had sex. I know I'm not about to have no sex, right? So what was always curious, right? You're saying God say this, God said that, but when I asked you how consistent are you reading the Bible, you're not reading the Bible consistently, right? So that's what I'm telling you about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can tell you someone's birthday, a prophecy, all this random stuff, but he's not going to tell you to read your Bible consistently. The Holy Spirit is not going to tell you, yo, uh, we're not going to have sex. The Holy Spirit is not going to tell you um, not to cut out secular music and godless entertainment. No. So that's why we have to operate in the confines of the um, Bible and the Holy Spirit, because you listen to seducing spirits that will only tell you all this random stuff, but won't tell you, hey, um, this is Jesus. This is who God is. This is cross. This is blood. This is repentance. This is the day of judgment. I am so shocked that the Holy Spirit has all this stuff to say, but he never talks about, <laughs> I am shocked that the Holy Spirit has all this random stuff to say, like birthdays, um, addresses, phone numbers, family numbers, names, but he never talks about Jesus, the cross, repentance, the blood, the day of judgment, being born again. So that's why I don't really trust nobody who says God said this, God says that, but they don't read their Bible. So um, this is how we make sure that we don't operate in division, divi <laughs> divination, divination. This is how we make sure we don't operate in divination, um, witchcraft, the cult, soothsaying as Christians. Um, because we need to operate in the confines of the Bible and as the Bible says. All right. So, again, um, making this very clear, simple and concise. How do you make sure as a Christian you're not operating in divination, the occult, witchcraft? Number one, read your Bible. Number two, do what it says. <laughs> And then number three, um, remember the Holy Spirit is a person and a spirit, and he has a will and emotions and desires. So what that means is that you cannot force him to do and say things as you will. You need to submit yourself and ask the Father, Lord, what is your will for today? So the Lord would tell you, hey, today I'm going to heal this person. Today I'm going to um, give a prophetic word. Today um, I'm going to do wherever, right? As he wills, he chooses. And so as I have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me and I read the Bible, I can know what his will is because I'm familiar with his voice. But when I try to listen to all these random voices, you listen to seducing spirits, demons, and unclean spirits because you're falling into divination. So uh, make sure that, again, all your thoughts submit to the knowledge of God through his Bible. All right. So um, thank you for watching. Um, I'll have one goal with this podcast and this channel is that you read your Bible and you do what it says. So make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe and watch this next video and share with a friend. Thanks for watching.